Well, hello everybody to my first episode of Let's Develop. Uh, my name is Sven and I'm going to practice some uh, test-driven development in this episode, which is uh, actually kind of a, uh, a pilot for this Let's Develop project. So um, what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to implement the basic rules of Conway's Game of Life. Um, I just look up these rules here on Wikipedia and uh, I'm going to first uh, quickly discuss the rules before I start implementing them. So um, the reason I chose uh, the game of life is because it's quite easy. Uh, it, plays, it takes place in the universe uh, which is actually a two-dimensional grid and uh, each cell in this grid is either alive or it's dead. And uh, the game of life itself is round based, so with every round it is for decided for every cell whether it will become alive in the next round or whether it will die in the next round or whether it will stay alive or stay dead. Um, and there are four simple rules that determine uh, how this happens. The first of this rule is that any life cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies in the next round because of underpopulation. Uh, the second round is that any life cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation or the next round. Um, the third rule is that any life th cell with more than three live neighbors dies uh, as if by overcrowding. And the fourth rule is that uh, any dead cell with at least three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction wherever we need three live neighbors for reproduction, but that's uh, a discussion for another time. What I did so far is just uh, I downloaded uh, the Eclipse Kepler distribution for Java developers and I created a simple Maven project uh, with a JUnit dependency so that I can easily do some uh, test-driven development. Okay. And I guess it's best we jump right into it. Um, I'm going to place a logic for uh, for the the cell update into uh, a class named cell. So the first thing I do here is create a a class named cell test, which will of course contain the tests for all cell class. Game of life. Let's get this package package to avoid the default eclipse warning, and let's jump right into it. Developing a first test. So let's have a quick look at the rules. I'm going to start with the first rule: um, that any life cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies. What I usually do when I develop, uh, when I write tests, is that I try to state what exactly the test is going to check in the test's name, and I do this by starting the test with a should, uh, in that game, should die with only one neighbor. Okay, so. Um, the first thing I need, of course, is the unit under test, which is a cell. And since I did not yet create that class, uh, I basically reached a point where I have a failing test. Because, I mean, the test doesn't compile, so it's, of course, failing. And that's why I'm going to create this cell class real quick. Game of life. And quick as that, our test compiles and I can assign it to a local variable called unit under test. And um, as the fact that the cell should die implies that the cell was alive to begin with, uh, I already want to create uh, some initial state which I will pass into the cell by the via the constructor uh, which says okay uh, 
I want to say something like cell dot cell state dot life, which is of course uh, uh, some kind of enumeration, which I'm going to create real quick. Public cell state, and there's a life and dead in here. Uh, which is this in enum, of course. So now this works, only that I need to create the respective constructor and that I want to assign this value to a new field, which is this cell state. I'm going to rename this quickly because life is not really what I want to have here. So let's remove this scaffolding uh, and I guess that's it for now. So now I'm able to create an alive cell and I want this cell to update get next state and I'm going to tell the cell that it has exactly one neighbor course now again I have a theoretically failing test because it doesn't even compile so I create this method real quick and I tell it to return an instance of cell state and actually make it return null because that's the easiest thing I can do what is this here uh, I used imports okay it's just remove some okay it's not used it's going to be used real soon and uh, I assign this state to a local variable which I call actual actual because I'm going to compare this actual next state to some expected next state with an assertion um, and I kind of tend to to call this variables actual and sometimes I, I even create the variable ex expected at least if uh, if the expected value is somewhat more than just just a constant so we have cell phone dot cell state dot dead which is my expectation and I guess this should be equal to the actual um, Let's add the static import real quick. Is it static import? Yeah, it is. Um, I implemented somewhat too much C sharp lately, so that I'm not now <laughs> familiar with the Java syntax anymore. Um, okay, now we have our first test. And I'm going to run this test because now for the first time I can execute it. And of course it fails because it did not implement anything. And um, what I'm going to do now, of course that's a little overdoing things probably for this really, really small example. But what I usually try to do is give it the simplest implementation possible, which would in this case be just return uh, cell state dead. Um, the reason why I do is this is um, when I implement only the, the least bit of code necessary to fulfill my test cases, um, I make sure that I don't introduce any branching and stuff that, that is not covered by any tests. So since my first cell, uh, test works quite good, I'm trying to write another test real quick, which is should die with zero neighbors. I'm pretty sure this test will work because I mean just just because of the way I implement it. Uh, I just implemented the rule, but uh, as Uncle Bob said, if there's an easy test to write, 
uh, there's no problem writing it, so just do it. Don't think, oh, that's an unnecessary test because I know that it works. Sometime later you might uh, actually revise your implementation and then exactly this case might go might break and you have not covered it by any tests. So uh, if there's an easy test case I can write, I just write it down. And uh, just to assure that everything still works. Yeah, well, okay, this works, two tests passing. Uh, on to the next rule. Second rule is that any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. So now it gets interesting because now I'm going to, uh, of course, need um, more logic in my, in my implementation. Live on with two neighbors. So now I'm again going to create my cell which is initially alive. I'm going to ask this cell for the next state and tell it that there are two neighbors. And uh, this is again our actual state and this time I expect that the cell state actually is alive. And uh, this is probably easy to see this is going to fail. Yeah. So now I have a broken test. So I go back to my to my switch here, and I'm going to say, okay, if i is bigger than one, then cell state alive, else cell state dead, which should. Uh, implement what I actually want. So I'm going to re-execute the test and see, yes, it works. So it's two or three, isn't it? So I'm just doing the same thing here. Implement the exact same test with the exception that there's three neighbors this time. And uh, it's still working, I'd say, yes. By the way, I'm going to reorder this test because in my mind it makes more sense to have the, the number of neighbors increasing. Okay, so my next test case is going to... Uh, it's going to cover the... The third rule, actually, that any live cell with more than three live neighbors is going to die. So I say should die with four neighbors. If it's alive, four neighbors, I expect the cell to be dead afterwards. Re-execute the tests, and again, one is failing. So the new condition is small or if i bigger than one or i smaller four should no it's i bigger one or i smaller four should live on what did i do now Well, 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 now we see what test-driven development is good for because I actually already messed it up, even though this should be some pretty easy logic. What did I do wrong? In the case of 4, I want to return that, so this should be false, so in the case of i smaller than 4, isn't it? Uh, this is exactly what I wrote before, and it seems like I messed it up. Um, let's see, what did I do? For 0, I returned 
actually return a life. Ah, stupid me. Okay, this should be an end. And everything's working now. Okay, uh, that was definitely a demonstration of stupidity, but uh, at least now we see what test-driven development is good for. Since I had all the tests, I pretty quickly recognized that I did some stupid stuff here and were able to fix it. So, since, it, since the rule is uh, that any cell with more than f uh, three neighbors actually is going to die in the next round, um, I'm going to add tests for the other uh, four cases, which is five neighbors, six, seven, and eight neighbors, because eight neighbors is the maximum possible. So it's four, five, six, and seven. It's actually, uh, I would really like to. Uh, have some feature like the like the um, what is it called um, test parameters par parameterized tests uh, you're able to do in C sharp where you can just annotate different input values and I could write the dead and the uh, alive cases in just I'd say two uh, test cases with uh, respective annotations would be really cool to have this actually for Java, but unfortunately we haven't, so we have to live on with what we get so far. So, what I see now is that I actually already wrote like nine tests to, to, cover, <laughs> to cover my uh, simple logic. In this case, it's really uh, exhaustive testing because there's a quite limited number uh, of cases but interestingly enough, I did, I did still not check anything uh, of my actual cell state. So this is pretty clear that there's a lot of stuff not tested at all now. So um, what I'm going to continue here with the rule that any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. So... The fun thing is that this is probably going to work without any change, isn't it? So I just say should become alive with three neighbors. I create my unit under test, which is my cell with a cell state dead this time. And now I'm going to just use this nice template and say okay this should be life afterwards funny thing is that this is probably going to work right okay so now I implemented basically all the rules but uh, as I just said is I still did not uh, even think about this initial cell state so what is missing is actually uh, like the opposite cases. But as uh, already quite some time passed, I think I'm going to move this to actually my second episode of Let's Develop, which means uh, this is it. By this is it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed developing this uh, small rule with me. And if you have some feedback, please leave comments and uh, let me know if you have any ideas how to improve, how to do this better, or how to show different things. If you're interested in anything uh, like setting up the project or stuff, I can definitely think about doing an episode on that. So see you guys.